we invested immensely in education to ensure that school years were not disrupted, and we did so because we knew the alternative would be significantly costlier to our society. That was why the President ensured that our children returned to school earlier to write the examinations to enable us to build the requisite human capital for the future and for them not to lose a precious year. We ensured consistent power supply and kept the lights on to enable businesses and households function despite the increasing costs of legacy energy agreements. We continued paying salaries and wages of all public sector employees and kept everybody at work without laying off our workers and factored in a 30% increment of base pay for workers on single spine salary structure this year. We invested, Mr. Speaker, in the security of the nation and protected our citizens, including the lives of the 1.1 million visitors who responded to our Beyond the Year of Return program, thus boosting tourism in the middle of the crisis. And we cleared up and strengthened the financial sector to promote entrepreneurship and private sector businesses, including agriculture, tourism, and hotels, manufacturing, etc. Mr. Speaker, 2022 was the most difficult year for me as Ghana's finance minister. On July 1st, 2022, we took what was then a difficult but necessary decision to request support from the IMF to implement our post-COVID-19 program of economic growth. The country was going through a dire period of economic uncertainties and despondency.